Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here. And this is just going to be a nice, laid back, kind of chill, not exactly reaction video, but talking about the first ever PlayStation State of Play, basically a PlayStation Direct, where they are taking the format of a live digital show. So. Right now, we've got the trailer for Iron Man VR, so which I'm not particularly interested in, so I'm just going to talk over this. I'm basically going to be talking over the whole thing. So, if you want a video where I live reaction to everything that's playing, this isn't going to be yet. So, sorry, but I was at work when this went down, so the best I can do is talk about it with you guys now. So this is Iron Man VR, which, eh. But overall, I must admit, uh, when I first heard about this, the the PlayStation State of Play, what they were gonna do, because my ideal scenario for them skipping out on E3 2019 was that okay they need to come up with something so, uh, preferably they need to come up with some kind of nintendo direct xbox wire kind of thing preferably in the vein of nintendo direct and i was actually if you care iron man vr's come out in 2019 i was initially very skeptical about this i was very concerned about how this was going to go because I I was worried that it was going to be in the format of the the E3 2018 E3 where they had like game and then there would just be these weird segues and this is insanely overlong intermission where it was just them wasting time by showing the shit we had already been shown and all of them sitting around a table with this squeaky clean PR bullshit and I was like oh shit I, I don't I don't know about this I hope to god that it's not in that format and I had initially heard that it was pretty bad that's what I had heard from a lot of people like I heard from uh, Richard in particular who was like it sucked besides crash team racing and a couple other things this thing sucked and i thought oh no that's that's not good and when i saw the like to dislike ratio i was like oh boy that's really not good and i was very nervous when i sat down to watch it because right now it's at like 7,000 likes and 23,000 dislikes. I was like, oh shit. They must have really dropped the ball and fucked this up. But to my surprise, it was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. I'm actually someone who is in the like category for this. Even though I don't even though I don't really care about a lot of the games, none of the game, like very few of the games really caught my eye and the, the less I hear about No Man's Sky, the better. <laughs> um, I, I love the format that they're going with. I think the format is pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be. It's this rapid fire delivery of games, no bullshit. No bullshit pacing, no awkward jokes, no meme bullshit, no PR squeaky clean chat with the PlayStation blog crew. It's just games, 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 games. And really, the only major problem I have with this is this, just the games themselves. Most of them are just are not very exciting. And I kind of half blame that on the... I half blame it on PlayStation and I half blame that on the audience. Whereas the audience, the audience, it's like, look, if you're going into this expecting them to drop megatons in March, and while a lot of the teams are now working on PlayStation 5 games, like, I saw some 
wildly outrageous expectations where they were thinking like, oh, Death Stranding will be shown, Last of Us Part 2 will be shown, Ghost Tsushima will be shown, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is going to be shown. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, no, no, it's not. I, uh, no, it's not. And I knew, I, I said, like, guys, keep your expectations really low for this. And I even I was very surprised because I thought it was going to be shit. And I just thought it was super to the point, short, no Mimi bullshit, very concise structure and pacing, and I liked it. And half of that, half of the negative reception, I blame on PlayStation as well, because I felt like they were very vague in setting expectations for this. And I think they should have just jumped on the grenade and been like, hey. We're not going to be showing The Last of Us Part 2. We're not going to be showing Death Stranding. We're not going to be showing Ghost of Tsushima. We're going to be showing a lot of the spring titles like Concrete Genie and Blood and Truth, which looks pretty good, by the way. And Days Gone we're going to be showing. So I think PlayStation should have themselves come out and set the expectations for this so people aren't so negatively like, ugh, this sucks, this was horrible. Because I've seen some stupid ass comments where people were like, ugh, this this was horrible, this was this was worse than the worst Nintendo Direct, which, no it wasn't. If you people remember some of the really boring Nintendo Directs, you wouldn't be saying that shit. At least this thing has like fucking concrete genie and that's way more exciting than I don't know, some of the shit that Nintendo's thrown out in their directs, especially for the Wii U. But I actually quite liked this. And I liked that it's just this simple thing where it just spells out what's coming and gives you updates on the stuff. But like I said, that where it needs improvement is just setting expectations for this and the game selection themselves because the game selection for this uh, like a lot of it I understand people are like oh so much of it was VR and yeah a lot of it was VR but and normally I'd be really pissed off about that but because I've now experienced VR firsthand I'm, I'm like okay uh, I'll, I'll take VR and really not a lot of the VR stuff caught my eye probably like this Trover saves the universe is really the only thing that really did. Uh, everybody's golf VR could be fun. If VR didn't make me like horribly motion sick with the most of the games, I I would definitely be a lot more excited for a lot of them. But as of right now, I'm just kind of like, eh. Like I don't really care about Vacation Simulator all that much. There's, I don't know. Blood and Truth actually looks pretty good. I might have to pick that up. And I don't really care about this from Devolver Digital. This, this, I don't know what this is. I don't really care. So, yeah. But yeah, just a lot of the negativity surrounding this thing. It's just, it just blows me away. I get that people have expectations, and I think a lot of that has to do with Sony just setting the bar really high in the past, especially with their E3s. But this, an event like this spells out to me that, oh yeah, they made a really good decision not to have an E3 this year. Because can you imagine if they did an E3, they, they like heard of the press in, they hyped up an E3, and they had this to show? Like, people would be so pissed. Like, people would be, like like, furious. Like, probably a lot more furious than people are about this. And I think this was the right way to go. I think this was the right way to be like, hey, look, we really don't have anything right now, but we've got stuff coming out in the spring. We've got updates on some of the stuff in the fall. Here you go. And I thought that was the best way to go about this. And, and yeah, a lot of it's VR focused, which if you don't own a VR headset, a lot of this is not going to appeal to you. Even I, I have a VR headset. I borrowed it from... Um, Mario's brother and uh, I, I I've tested I've like I've tested how much I can tolerate and I like VR I love VR as a concept it's just most of the games it, it takes a very specific VR game a very specific way design philosophy to not 
make me horribly motion sick. And I have a feeling like a lot of this stuff that they're advertising would make me horribly motion sick. If it's in a seated fixed position, maybe I'd like it. But any of these games where you have to aim with your head, like you're shooting, I, I can't do that. That makes me sick. Um, maybe this Five Nights at Freddy's thing would be okay. Maybe I'd be alright with that, but I don't know. It just... I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of Five Nights at Freddy's anyway, so this just doesn't really... It's disgusting. It's creepy. But... I, I can't even really do Five Nights at Freddy's like normally because I just I just don't I, like it's it's jumpy scary and it just gets annoying not even scary it just makes you it startles you it's one of those games that just startles you instead of really building on like a, a really terrifying atmosphere um, now this concrete genie this was definitely for me the highlight of this because I've been looking forward to this since they announced it at, oh my god, since Paris Games Week 2017 when they announced it. And I didn't even like their last game, uh, uh, Pixel Opus's last game, which was that, um, uh, whatever that one was with the, the fish and the bird. I told, oh, and Twine, that's what that was called. I, I, oh, I hated that game. I thought it was just boring as shit. But this looks to be a lot better, where their influences are a lot like Jet Set Radio, and I get a lot of uh, infamous Second Son vibe from this, especially with the, the hopping around and the, the graffiti. And I like the premise, where it's this kid that gets bullied in this shit town, and he finds this magic paintbrush to in order to create these um, these genies as they're called these figure these paint figures on the wall i love the idea behind it i'm just not a hundred percent sure if there's going to be enough variety and i wonder how robust the painting is and i don't if i have like one negative right now it's that i don't like the kids voice acting the main kid the bullies are fine it's just the main kids voice acting is just flatter than a pancake under a steamroller but it looks great. It's just the the art design I really like. But I don't know. Nothing. Even when it was first announced, that was probably the most excited I was for it. But as you'll see later, it's coming out in fall 2019, which eh, it, uh, that's a little bit of a not the best time. I think either spring, because it was initially announced for spring 2019. And now it's been pushed back to fall. And I think this game, this kind of game, depending also depending on how much it costs. I hope to God it's not a $60 game. If it's a $60 game, this thing's going to be a really hard sell for a lot of people. Now, if it comes out, it's like 30 at most 40 Like, I will, I will, I will give you 40 for this. But 60 that's, that's, that's too much. That's too much, man. But I hope it's really good. See, look at that, like how he's jumping. It reminds, reminded me of um, Infamous Second Son. And I'm not sure how I feel about them being, there being like dark genies in this. Like the, the darkness. It's just this generic enemy called the darkness, which I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of enemies just being called the darkness. It's so stupid. And apparently it's got VR modes, which that makes sense. It's about Concrete painting, which, from developer Pixel Opus. I mean, thankfully it's not a full VR game. game. I can play this just on my pro, just, just fine. But I have, I have, you know, a decent amount of hope for Concrete Genie. It looks good. Days Gone, I'm, I'm, I'm still very skeptical of it. I'm sick to death of seeing it at this point. I just want it to come out so I can play it and see if it's good. But I like that from the PlayStation blog, when I went in and read the post from the game director after this trailer went out, I like that they're emphasizing that this is a very emotionally compelling story. Hopefully it's not just a bunch of lip service where they're like, oh, it's emotional and you'll care deeply about these characters i hope that's actually true because if i'm not oh man it's gonna be a long long slog through this i'm just bored 
fighting and I don't give a shit. But apparently, um, well not apparently, from what I've seen, they've really gone in and changed some of the game. Like, they showed off the first hour of the game uh, quite a while ago, I think at the beginning of last year in one of Game Informer's things, and it looked vastly different than how it does now, where they changed, they like, they completely got rid of binary choices in the game where you could choose to do one thing or the other, where there was one instance in the beginning where Deacon had the option to shoot some guy in the head or leave him alive to be eaten, and you could choose whether or not to do that. That's all gone now. Deacon just shoots the guy because Sony Ben were saying, well, we were testing binary choices and we got a lot of feedback from people. Then we just decided it just didn't work. So they got rid of it. So obviously the, the multiple delays for this game have worked out in the game's favor because initially this was coming out in 2019 and then it got pushed to February or it was originally going to come out in 2018 and then it got pushed back into um, uh, February 2019. Now it's coming out April 26, 2019. And it looks like they've done a decent job polishing the game, making it look better than it has in the past. I just hope it's good because this is, 2019 has kind of a, been a, at least the first half, has been a really slow year for PlayStation exclusives at least but i hope days gone is really good because i think playstation just needs something at this point it's it's almost april and last year you know you had shadow of the colossus and you had you know god of war coming out but really all we've got so far is just days gone but anyway i hope it's good now we're moving on to Mortal Kombat 11, which I think was a really bad way to end the conference. Not that it's a bad trailer, or I'm saying conference. It was a bad way to end this digital thing, this, this first ever PlayStation Direct, which to me, this is like ending a Nintendo Direct with the latest version of FIFA. Like, you know Mortal Kombat 11 is coming out. I don't understand why they didn't end this with either Concrete Genie or Days Gone. I feel like they should have ended this with Concrete Genie. But it's Mortal Kombat 11, which isn't even a first party game. It looks good. I'm not gonna buy it day one because I never, I don't buy these Warner Brothers games. I never buy these Warner Brothers games day one because they're just, I don't know. They always seem to be the weaker versions of the games that come out if you wait like a year or a year and a half definitely like the more expensive option to buy at day one or you could just wait a year and a half and get it for like 17 bucks and you'll get everything that came with it when it was you know the, the downloadable content so and also i'm not impressed with the roster in this one like this guy this sand guy he's him and one other person are like the only new characters that I'm seeing. Everyone else is returning. And I like the characters. It's just... I, I'm like, really? Like, where are all the new characters? This seems such a, a waste of a roster. It's like you've got... Like, like really? You've got Jackie Briggs again? And then you've got Jax? And then you've got Johnny Cage? And it's like all these old guys are coming in. It's like, it's like where's the new people? But, I don't know, game looks good. I might red box it just so I can go through the campaign because I sure as shit am not buying it. You sure as shit am not doing a video about it because WB is persona non grata on this channel because I, I hate Warner Brothers so much. Uh, but I think this, this was just a really weak way to end the presentation. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 coming April 23rd, blah, 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 blah. I don't, whatever. I'll rent it, I'll play it, I'll play it, yeah, whatever. So that was PlayStation's State of Direct, or State of Play, the first ever one, which, you know, format I think they nailed. I think the format is great. I love where they're going with it. They just need the games to fill it out, and they need to really set and manage expectations. That's really all I got. See you guys later. Bye.